Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. Sorry I've got a hair on my face and it's really annoying me. I hope that you're all good. For today's video I thought I would talk you through some of the habits that I wish I had implemented sooner. So I'm now 30 and I kind of started these late 20s but if I started them early 20s it would have been chef's kiss. Hello, by the way, my name is Laura, and if you don't know who I am, I am a health, fitness, and self-development coach. And so, of course, the 20 things that I'm going to talk about today involve health, fitness, and self-development. So first things first, number one is that I would have started setting myself goals sooner. And when I reflect on this one, I always had a vision for how I wanted my life to be, but I think the difference is, is that I never had a structure. So what I would encourage anyone to do, just so that you can kind of visualize where you want to be in the future, where you're headed is to first of all set yourself a 10 year goal and it can be as unrealistic as you like as flamboyant flamboyant's probably the wrong word but you get what i mean as over the top as you like set your 10 year goal and then work backwards from there so set your 10 year goal and then think okay so what is my five year goal what do i need to have achieved but in five years time to work towards my 10 year goal. Once you've got your five year goal, go for three, then for one, and then break it down month by month. So at the beginning of every month, I like to write out all of my goals. And then from there, I consider the habits that I need to implement daily in order to achieve these goals. So for example, one goal for this month could be, I want to get 10 more clients, okay. So in order to get 10 more clients, I need to be posting on social media every day. I need to be eating healthy. I need to be replying to my DMs. You get the picture. Also, do we like this hair? I'm not sure about it. I got it toned down a little bit, but I feel like I wanna go even darker. I just feel like I'm a dark babe. Okay, so number two would be to cut back on the binge drinking. And if you couldn't tell, I'm from the UK, so obviously there's a really big drinking culture here. So I, from the age of 16, was drinking bottles of wine in parks and it kind of became a staple of every weekend where the goal was just to get as drunk as possible. and. When I look back during this time, like I was very insecure, as a lot of teenagers are, trying to figure out who I was in the world and alcohol offered a social lubrication in order for it to be easier for me to make friends and socialize. But it also set me up for some tricky experiences which I wouldn't like to repeat. As I got older and I considered my health more, it just became apparent that drinking alcohol really doesn't do anything for you health-wise. And also socially, like, I feel like, I felt like I needed it when I was younger in order to be social. But now my confidence has grown and I am able to see my friends, go on dates, all of these things without alcohol. And so recently I've made the decision to stop drinking. It hasn't been that long, but I feel 10 times better knowing that it won't be a part of my future. And let's not even talk about the fact that it ages you. And number three on the same thread as that would be to quit smoking. So I used to smoke like when I was a teenager, early 20s, thankfully, I never liked it, I never enjoyed it. I kind of used it, sadly, as an appetite suppressant and to look cool in front of my friends. And so it was quite easy for me to stop. But again, the health implications of smoking, it ages you, it makes your skin dull. It's just, it also makes you smell. So the sooner that you can stamp that out, the better. And if possible, don't vape as a replacement. I know that a lot of people it helps them to quit smoking, but if you're able to, try to avoid smoking and vaping. The fourth habit would be to get facials instead of filler. And I'm not saying, I'm not anti-filler, I've had filler myself, 
But whenever I was younger, I used to think that filler would solve problems when in actuality, it was probably my, if I looked at my skin and improved my skin, then that would have made me look far better. I'm actually going for a facial in a couple of weeks time and I'm gonna make it a staple part of my routine. So I'll probably look to go once a month. And I know that it, it is a privilege in terms of financial restraints, but there's a lot that you can do at home as well. And so my advice would be to look at your skin type, do as much research as you can and invest in skincare. Also on this point, please, please, please wear sun cream. Please, please. Number five is a personal one for me and a lot of my clients. So I would go for low impact workouts over high intensity ones. And the reason for this is fewfold, twofold, threefold, anyway, a few folds. So one, it's what I prefer to do and you're more likely to keep up with a fitness routine whenever you actually enjoy doing it. Two, I, so my mum has had surgeries on her knees, she's got weak knees and I just look at that and she used to run a lot when she was younger and I want to put myself in the best position to be as healthy as I can for as long as I can and I want to avoid having too much pressure on my joints. Another thing is in terms of hormones. So you might have seen, I've spoken about it in a previous video and also on my social media, but I came off the contraceptive pill a few months ago, hence why my skin has been breaking out a little bit. But hormonally, if you're experiencing some sort of hormone imbalance, they do say that the best thing in terms of exercise is to slow things down, try to de-stress as much as you can and you can do that through low impact workouts. And number six is really adding to that and that is to work out for your health and not for aesthetics. Please don't get me wrong, I care about aesthetics, I care about how I look, hence why I've done my hair, hence why I've done my makeup, hence why I have my nails done. Everybody cares and it's just ignorant to pretend like you don't but when your foundations are good in terms of your health, whenever you're looking after yourself, you're going to look your best anyway. And a little story for you. So about one or two years ago, I was lifting really heavy and it was the BBL era. So everyone wanted a big bum. I naturally don't have a very big bum, but I was trying my <laughs> darndest to get one. And in the process, I overworked my glutes and my hip flexor muscles, are not as strong and so I have something called snapping hip as a result snapping hip syndrome something anyway whenever I lower my legs down they make the most awful cracking sound and also lordosis as well so lordosis is whenever your back curves at the bottom and I believe that overworking my glute muscles over the years has contributed to those issues that I'm now trying to correct. And I'm not saying that if you work out, if you like to lift weights, that that will happen to you. But I just think it's important to consider your health whenever you're thinking of aesthetics. Number seven is to adopt a whole foods diet. So I spent, if you are if you already watch this channel, you know this already, but I spent the good part of over a decade dieting, yo-yo dieting. Sorry, there's a reversing truck outside and it's beeping. Oh no, it's stopped now, thank you. <laughs> so I spent a long, long time yo-yo dieting and I look back now and I just think if I would have adopted a whole foods diet, nourished myself really well and stopped counting calories, stopped weighing myself every day, just stopped the nonsense, then I would have achieved my goals quicker and I also wouldn't have spent the past decade miserable. I have another video that discusses about switching to a whole foods diet, so I would recommend watching that if you want some more information on that. I feel like this is gonna be a very long video, but number eight is to time block my days. So if you saw my diary, you would think that I was unwell, but I love it. So every Sunday, I go to a cafe, have myself a little coffee, and I will look at everything that I have in the week. I have systems for everything. I even have a system for my weekly beauty treatments, for my workouts. 
there's a whole process. But anyway, what I do is I break everything down into 15 minute segments. So I look at my week, I put in everything that is, what's the word? That is a priority. I make sure that that's in my diary. I make sure that my workouts are scheduled in, that even simple things like going to the sauna, reading a book, I make sure that everything is scheduled in so I guarantee that I have the time to do it all. And if I don't have the time to do it all, then I don't do it. That's a really good tip if you're someone who finds that you procrastinate a lot or you feel like you don't have a lot of time in your day you do have time. It's just a question of prioritizing. Number nine would be to wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day. And I know that for a lot of people who do shift work, this is super, super difficult and, and just not possible. But if it is possible for you, I would really recommend it. Last year I was working in a pub and I was finishing and getting home at like 2 a.m. some days. And so for me, it wasn't possible at that time. But now that I'm able to have a routine, I can't tell you how much better it is to switch everything off at 9 p.m., get some sleep and wake up at six every day. Like it's just, and you know what? The favorite part of my day is the morning when everything's quiet I just look out my window, I see the sunrise. It's just, oh, so good. Number 10 is distancing myself from friends who clearly didn't like me. And this isn't aimed at anyone specific. And I do also think, I think the more that I've grown up and matured, I've realized that actually you can be the problem sometimes. And when I look at past friendships and people I'm not necessarily close with anymore. It probably was a mutual thing where we just didn't, we weren't compatible anymore. But there are friendships when I look back and I'm like, you you just didn't like me. And that's okay, some people don't have to like you, but there are people who will keep you around for the sake of keeping you around. And you have to be very careful where you give your energy. And if you're giving your energy to someone who you just feel like, one, it's not reciprocated, but two, it's not appreciated. Just get out of there, you won't even miss them. I think it's like an integrity thing as well. Like whenever you respect yourself enough to not let people disrespect you, that's when everything in your life just elevates. Number 11 was to improve my public speaking. Funny story, so, Actually, last night I booked in a call with a public speaking expert, I suppose you would call call them. And I had my first session, I was really excited because it's something that I've always wanted to improve. So whenever I was in school, I really struggled with public speaking. I'm dyslexic and reading a book in front of a class just traumatized me. So it was always something that I've been a little bit self-conscious of over the years. And I've always said to myself, whenever I financially am in a position, I would love to get a coach to help me with public speaking. So I get on this call yesterday and I tell her all of what I wanna do and what my goals are. And she looks at me and she's like, are you sure this is for you? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. And then she says, I actually think you have imposter syndrome. I don't think you need these classes. So, slow, <laughs> that's fun. But in conclusion, so public speaking and the way that you can communicate is key to everything because there's, if you, for example, if you want to build a brand online, you could have all the great ideas in the world. If you can't communicate them to someone, then no one is going to hear them or take you seriously, which is kind of depressing, but true. But it's also just important in terms of relationships, dating, making new friends. If you can walk in a room and be confident in who you are, look people in the eye, like I'm doing now, then your life will just improve so much. And I really wish I would have worked on it sooner in my life rather than just avoided any sort of public speaking. I probably needed lessons when I was younger, not now. Number 12, I wasn't sure if I was gonna touch upon this because I, a few years ago, I was far more of an open book, but nowadays I'm more guarded with what I talk about in terms of my personal life. 
But I do think it's important, in t- maybe it's not a habit, I don't know, but anyway, it's on the list. So when it comes to dating, I used to be such a pushover. I used to let men treat me like absolute shit. And a couple of years ago, I found that I was just dating people, again, like the friendship thing, people who just did not care about me at all. And it was during the time when I was trying to get my health back on track anyway. And I just drew a line and I was like, no more of this. And I actually took a break from dating and just worked on myself. And it really, really made me reflect on my relationship with men and also the behavior that I was willing to tolerate. And I look back on some of the things that I put up with and I just think, like it just, it makes me unwell. And so what I would say is that work on yourself before you look for a partner. A partner or dating isn't gonna fill the void inside of you. It's just not, if anything, it's gonna exacerbate any problems that you might have. And I think it's really important to build a relationship with yourself so that anyone who comes into your life, they only add value. And also if they are to leave your life, you will be okay. Number 13 is to learn about hormone health. And I, this is actually something that I've only recently really done. And I don't know about nowadays, but whenever I was a teenager, it probably is the same nowadays, let's be real. But for any problem that I would have, if I had a sore ankle, I'm only joking. But if I had bad skin, if I was feeling moody, the doctor would put you on the contraceptive pill and I was put on the contraceptive pill at the age of 13. I don't even think my parents were aware of it, but I really wish that I would have looked more into hormone health. And I was on the contraceptive pill for a long time when I didn't need it. And it was almost like a safety blanket for me. And now that I am 30, I've come off the contraceptive pill and I feel like I'm kind of learning my body again. And I'm not saying not to go on the contraceptive pill. I'm just saying to do your research and learn about your hormones. And to add to that, how can you improve your hormone health? Could you look at what you're eating, drinking alcohol, all of these things that you, that we do every day potentially, and we're not even aware that it's fucking us all up basically. Number 14, I briefly mentioned this earlier whenever I was talking about a whole foods diet, but is to stop yo-yo dieting. So since I was a teenager, I've gone up 10 kilograms, lost 10 kilograms, gone up five, down five. And from an aesthetic point of view, it stretches your skin. And I am at the point now where I am considering a booby lift because of all the years of yo-yo dieting. So financially it's had a hit or it's going to have a hit but also in terms of your health and in terms of hormones as well so your satiety hormone all of these things are what's the word homeostasis so it just throws off your homeostasis in your body good word also not to mention it makes you miserable because you're either too full bloated and comfortable not feeling good in your skin or you're starving Okay, we're getting there now. So number 15 is to spend quality time with family, especially your parents, if you're lucky enough to have them in your life. This is a really morbid thing to think about, but we're all getting older and I just think there comes a point in your life when you move out, potentially for the last time, sometimes you go back home, I've done that a few times, but you move out and there comes a point in your life where you just don't see your parents as much and your family as much. And so I really, really try to make an effort to go and see my parents at least once every two weeks. And whilst your family might annoy you in some respects, you might disagree with things, they're your family. And I think as long as, of course, it's different whenever it comes to family dynamics which are abusive I'm not talking about that but whenever you have a good family around you I think it's really important to make time because it's so easy to just fill that time and just say oh I'll see them another time time is finite number 16 I guess this leads on 
from the family subject potentially, but is to take accountability for yourself and your actions and say sorry. It's a very British thing to say sorry for everything, even things that you don't have to be sorry for. But sometimes when it comes to things that genuinely we should apologize for, it becomes so much harder, especially whenever it comes to loved ones. Whenever I started taking accountability for my life, which was probably my early 20s, and saying, look, Laura, you're here because of the things that you have done in your life. This is a direct result of the work that you put in a few years ago. And if you're unhappy with the result, you need to change the behavior. And a lot of that was just taking accountability. Number 17 is becoming financially literate. I think I'm gonna do a whole video on this because this was one of the things that I've had to work really hard on over the past couple of years. So I, whenever I was younger, I had some very, very unhealthy coping, coping mechanisms and I didn't earn very much money and I used to literally spend everything that I earned. I didn't save money for anything basically. And I always earn under the threshold of paying tax for a long time and then this was a big wake up call for me. So whenever I became self-employed and I had to start paying tax, I wasn't putting money away for the tax, which is just so fucking stupid. I can't even compute, but I didn't. And I just thought to myself, oh, well, I'll just put it in at a later date. I'll have more money at that point. And it didn't, more money didn't magically come into my account. So I ended up having a big tax bill that came out of nowhere and I had nothing in my bank. And so I actually had to take out a loan and I have just paid that off, but it was a big wake up call for me. And I think really only since earning more money have I really had to evaluate my money habits and my relationship with money. And I, whenever I started earning more money, I was finding that I was still in that habit of spending everything that I had, even though I had more than enough money to invest in things, to pay off debts. And so I had to have a real talk with myself and be like, Laura, you can't live like this because you're literally, you're gonna lose everything that you've worked so hard for. So I would say to read as much as you can about money. There's a great TikTok account, I forget her name, I'll link it, but she was in a lot of debt, I believe, and then, um, she basically shares tips online for how to create healthier relationships with money. And I think as well, it can be a, an issue for women because we're the ones that spend good money on small products. And there's something called the lipstick theory, which is basically when times are hard, you still buy small purchases in order to make yourself feel better. And I feel like women are really targeted in terms of marketing with this. So my advice would be linked into the setting goals at the beginning. Think of your goals. Do you want a house in the future? Do you want a family? And really consider if your money habits now are building towards your goals in the future. On the subject of money, number 18 would be to start saving and investing as soon as you can. Even if that's just £10, £50, £100 here and there, I have only just started doing that and I look back and I'm like, God, if I, like, what did I even spend my money on? If I would have made a plan just to contribute 10% of what I earn every month, I would be, I would have a little pot of gold, but <laughs> I'm starting now. And so the sooner that you can learn about investing and saving, the better. Number 19 is to stop caring so much about what other people think. And I know it's very easy for me to say, just, just don't care, done, problem solved. But when I think back to launching my brand and putting myself online, I had people message me and be like, what is this, what are you doing? And I would have friends who would watch everything that I did, but never liked, never commented, we, you know the ones. And if I would have let those silent, oftentimes opinions bother me, I wouldn't be where I am now, I wouldn't have, found my dream career, I wouldn't be in a good position financially. And I just think like, 
people are gonna talk anyway, no matter what you do. And why would you live for people that you might have gone to school with, you might have met once? Like, if they're that bothered to be watching you every day, then they're the ones with the issues. And then number 20 would be to travel as much as possible. And this is one thing that I actually did and I'm very proud of myself for. So I, I think I was 18, decided to book a ticket to Thailand and Malaysia and go traveling. And I actually, at the time, had a boyfriend and I kind of wish that I would have just like um, got rid of him because I was that's what I was thinking about the whole time but I'm really glad that I did because it just showed me that how big the world is and I met new people I had new experiences it was very character building and so I did it on a shoestring as well like as I said I literally had no money so I would encourage you just to get out of your hometown or wherever you're from just to connect with people who might be a little bit different to you you can learn so much by doing that. So I would really, really encourage you to do that. We've made it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these kinds of videos, let me know and I'm more than happy to do more for you. Have a lovely day. Make sure that you subscribe, otherwise I'll find you. And, uh, and I'll see you soon.